Hello YouTube, this is Shin Tiger Kuro here, that dude in the straw hat, bringing you yet another wrestling review. I'm of course joined by my fellow internet superstar and roommate, Joe. Say hi, Joe. He's happy for MVP. Well, it's Sunday night. You know what that means. Time for some pay-per-view wrestling. Who's pay-per-view? TNAs. This is Hardcore Justice. Yeah, not really too feeling too much about this one, but I've been wrong before. So does it stack up to the height to its not so much hype? I got my notes. Let's get started. First matchup: the X Division title on the line: Alex Shelley versus Austin Aries versus Brian Kendrick defending. This was a pretty decent opener, um, but I have to say this was this was more. This match seemed to favor, seemed to showcase more of Austin Aries' abilities. Not that I'm, not that I'm hating on that. I love me some A Double, greatest man who ever lived. But, the, but, uh, not to say that Shelley was any worse. He he was his, his pretty usual self. Kendrick felt out of place to me. He, I've never bought Kendrick as X Division champion, mostly because the guy looks like he he looks homeless. I mean, Austin Aries even said so himself later tonight. The guy looks homeless and malnourished. I mean, somebody give him a steak dinner or something. Anyway, um, they played, they both, Kendrick and Shelley mostly just keep, try to keep Austin out of the match. So, in the end, Spanky picks up the win. It was a good opener. Next matchup Serena and Rosita versus Tara and Miss Tessmacher. Uh, knockouts tag champion top, knockouts title on the line tag titles on the line why do they still have this belt they really there is no knockouts tag division it's, it's not existent it's just two teams so those belts are more worthless than the WWE tag belts anyway long story short Tara and Vince Tessmacher retain who gives a flying fuck next match Bound for Glory series matchup, The Pope versus Devon. Now, at the start of the match, that before the match started, Pope said he was going to do the right thing. And, at the, and when the match started, Pope pulled out a microphone and said that while the Bound for Glory series match, match the Bound for Glory series was um, important to him, his relationship with Devon and his kids and wife was even more. So he decides to lay down. Devon gets pissed at this and tells him he's taking the points, but not without. But first, he's gonna get the gratitude of beating his ass. And actually, this was actually a lot better match than I thought it was. Not. It seemed to to that, that um that the Pope finally stops acting like a, a dumbass and starts actually competing for points. I mean, that's why we're in this series, because the because eventually. Whoever wins this series goes on to to go to Bound for Glory for a shot at the title. So right now he needs to do less, be less worried about Devon and his kids and his wife, and more worried about getting to his ass some points, because they've only gotten to to the um, next pay per view that the points are going to really matter. But anyway, this was a good match, not just with the psychology involved, but there were some points that 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 um the Pope seemed to be phoning it in but at other points he seemed to get his ass in gear. Uh Pope wins this, earning him more uh, seven more points. Uh Devon originally wasn't gonna shake um Pope's hand when he extended it, but his sons encouraged him to do so and he makes up with him. Good match. Uh also in the ladies standings, apparently Samoa Joe has negative ten points. And someone explained this to me on um the CBR forums. Apparently, for the Bound for Glory series, while you don't lose points if you lose, you do lose points if you're disqualified. So, when Samoa Joe got disqualified, got the the um, decision reversed this Sun this past Thursday on Impact. Um, not only did he lose those ten points that he earned with a submission, but he lost an additional ten points because the because the decision was reversed. So right now. Joe is at negative 10 points. You're dead to me, Joe. 
N not you, the other Joe. Samoa Joe. Anyway. Uh, next match. Knockouts tied on the line. Winter versus Mickey James. Didn't really too much care for this match. A lot of shenanigans as, Ange as the pirate hooker, um, Angelina Love, intervened twice in the match. The end comes when Winter spits something in, I want to say green mist, but it looked more like a big loogie. And, she, and it's one, two, three. Uh, Winter's the new knockouts champion. And Brian and, and Earl Hebner's wondering, what's her, what happened? Can you not see the red shit that's in her face? How she's blinded? That is not a legal move, in, in, as far as I know, in women's wrestling. Backstage, we have a... I'm only, there are a lot of backstage segments, but I'll mention this one. Kendrick is talking about how he defended the title, and, and Austin Aries comes up and says that he only beat Alex Shelley. He never beat Austin Aries. So the greatest man alive tells him that he will wrestle Kendrick anytime, anywhere, only to, pro to prove that he is the better man. Next matchup. Crimson versus RVD Bound for Glory series matchup between the two uh, top dogs in the series. Also to note, Jerry Lynn is outside on Rob in Rob's corner. Uh, this was a passable match. Sad to say that um, Crimson still does not look like a dominant monster that deserves a, um, a streak of any kind. The finish comes when he hits the red sky, that sky high power bomb, which is lame on RVD. Or he goes for the pin, but Jerry Lee Jerry Lynn jumps in the ring and blatantly stops it. The ref calls for the bell and not only does does uh, does um Crimson get the points, but because of his it was a disqualification um RVD loses 10 points. So I'm really going to question the logic that that Jerry Lynn has here. I mean, sure um, um, sure, RVD was going to lose, but he wasn't going to lose any points. He still was going to be the number two guy in this in, in the um, in the series. But now he has dropped low. I mean, really low. He is knocked out of the top four, and the top four is where you want to be at. So, hopefully, this the only way I can explain this is that they're doing a heel turn for Jerry Land. Otherwise, this is a pointless move. And this also kind of undermines um, Crimson's whole streak since he couldn't, since he only won this by DQ. I don't remember Goldberg ever winning a match by DQ. Not that it went that well, those went very long. Hmm. Anyway, um, next matchup Six Man Tag Team War Abyss, Steiner, and Gunner representing Immortal versus Kazarian, Christopher Daniels, and AJ Styles representing Fortune. I really could not get into this match because it felt so slapped together. I know there's a few going on between Immortal and Fortune, but this didn't seem very coherent to me. I don't know why. I really couldn't get in this match. And that's saying something considering that I love Fortune. Uh, one point, um, at one point, Christopher Daniels and Gunner actually go through a table, and and Daniels looked like he landed the wrong way. So I hope he's okay. Finish comes when um, AJ lands a reverse flip Pele off the ropes. I think he botched that. I don't know. But he pins Abyss. One, two, three. Fortune wins. At the end, Gunner and S Scott Steiner get in his ass and tell him that he fucked up again. Next matchup, Bully Ray versus Anderson. This match stemming from the fact that Anderson and Bully don't seem to get along in Immortal. The, the, the start was kind of funny, but Bully Ray came out first, hid, and then when Anderson was doing his intro, he came up from behind him, and Mr. Anderson's going, got, some, got the mic, and he's like, My name is Mr. Anderson! I know he's right behind me! And hits him from, the, from behind, and hits... Um, bully with the microphone, but I gotta admit that was pretty funny. Basically, this was a, just a straight up fight. This was just two guys beating the other, ever loving hell out of it, and I and I liked it. Surprisingly enough, this is this, I'm surprised because the Dudleys have done very well for themselves as individual wrestlers instead of a tag team. I mean, 
most tag teams who have been as, together as long as these two have, they wouldn't have as much uh, evolution as, as these two have. Sadly, my cable kind of went out, so I have no idea who won this. So, uh, but all I knew was, all I don't know is that backstage, um, Immortal, uh, I think Eric Young, I mean, not Eric, Eric Bischoff and Hulk Hogan were chewing everybody out, and it appears that Abyss is in the doghouse. Next matchup Mexican America versus Beer Money for the tag titles. Not the best tag matchup I've ever seen. Mostly because Mexican America is a terrible tag team. And, and they just should not be anywhere near the tag titles right now. Which is good because in the end, Beer Money reigns supreme. Final match Kurt Angle versus Sting. World Heavyweight Title. Uh, this was certainly a lot better match than I thought it would be. But I've seen better. It's not the best. It's certainly the, not the worst. It's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, a lot of back and forth action. Sting is really showing his age in this match. And Kurt's still the wrestling machine that we all know and love. Ref takes a bump. And then Hulk Hogan waddles his old ass down to the ring with a steel chair and prepares to lay out Sting. Kurt's not having any of this and takes the, 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 the steel chair away and chases Hogan off. Then he hits Sting with the, with the chair, hits the angle slam, one, two, three, Kurt Angle's your new champion. So, don't know how to feel about that. And so, that's hardcore justice. My thoughts... It was just a meh show. None of them. The, the only the only two matches that I really liked was Pope Devon and Anderson Bully Ray. Other than that, most of the matches just felt skippable, and there was really no build to it. The world title match ended kind of foobar, and and the um the 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 bound for, and this bound for glory series match between and between Crimson and um RVD was the ending was just kind of sucky. But yeah, that's my verdict. It's just kind of meh. Not bad, but watchable to a point. But yeah, that's about, that's um, Hardcore Justice. Tune in tomorrow when I, re when I review um, Monday Night Raw. It's the go-home show before, before SummerSlam. What will, the, what will Punk and Cena have to say for themselves with their upcoming title unification match? We'll find out tomorrow night. So until then, this is Shin Tiger Curl, that dude in the straw hat, and Joe, saying goodnight, and wrestle on.